Ever wondered why Mormons have quite a distinct and intriguing way of life, different from the everyday Christians you see? Well, Mormons have a number of beliefs which are intertwined with the Christian faith, even though many Christians don't recognize Mormonism as an official denomination. Certain regulations make the denomination stand out, the first of which is, Mormons can't drink coffee. Yeah, you heard that right. Mormons can't drink coffee. Though coffee has been popular around the world for centuries, it doesn't always mix well with religion, as is the case with Mormonism. Modern-day Mormons are allowed to drink herbal teas and hot chocolate. And recently, church authorities lifted the ban on caffeinated drinks like soda, but coffee is still officially off the Mormon drinks menu. The church recommends avoiding anything made with tea leaves, whether hot or cold. Secondly, Mormons can't gamble. As a way of making sure their faith in God remains solid and undiluted, Mormons tend to distance themselves from anything that'll make them feel attached to earthly treasures and drift them away from their beliefs. Thirdly, in addition to not being able to drink coffee, Mormons aren't allowed to have tea either. According to the Word of Wisdom, the official doctrine of the Church, teas are categorized as strong drink and are meant to be avoided. Some people assume that tea and coffee were prohibited because they contain caffeine. Caffeine is a stimulant and can have harmful side effects. Caffeine is widely acknowledged to be a stimulant and an addictive substance. Although the church does not specifically prohibit it, they do not endorse it either. Guidance published in church magazines suggests strongly that it can be a dangerous substance, especially if it is consumed to excess. Fourth on the list. Mormons have to marry Mormons. Although the Mormon congregation won't put a weapon to your head and drag you to the altar to get bonded in holy matrimony, it is obligatory that one has to get married and marry a Mormon at that. This is so because Mormons believe in the afterlife. Being more specific, Mormons believe that, that there is a place called the Celestial Kingdom. That kingdom is divided in three sub-kingdoms, and if you want to make it to the top, you have to be faithful and marry for time and eternity inside one of the Mormon temples. Mormons call what I just described as exaltation, which means living with God. Getting married to someone from a different denomination may result in clash of doctrines and beliefs. Mormons are known to be very dedicated to their religion and try to maintain a direct communication with God, and this brings it to point number five. Mormons have to serve full-time missions. Family life, good deeds, respect for authority, and missionary work are important values in Mormonism. Although nobody can force you to do it, but the church expects that as soon as young men are 18, they serve a full-time mission. The missionary program consists in serving 24 months as a Mormon missionary anywhere in the world. Mormon missionaries have a different set of rules to keep during the service, such as not dating, being with their missionary companion all the time, and so much more. Still on their commitment to the church and its development, Regulation Number 6 emphasizes on the need for Mormons to pay tithes, as opposed to most Orthodox congregations who see paying of tithes as optional. If you are a Mormon and you want to be counted among the faithful servants of the faithful, you have to donate the 10% of everything you earn to the church, which is used to fund church operations and charitable work. The church also places a strong emphasis on education and encourages members to pursue higher education. Many Mormons attend church-owned universities, such as Brigham Young University, and the church provides financial assistance to those in need. Regulation number seven. Mormons practice clothing rituals. Mormons practice clothing rituals that include wearing special undergarments that have religious significance. Known as the temple garment, the attire is worn by adult members who make sacred promises to God. The Mormon undergarment is not magical, but some members of the church have said that it has protected during accidents. Incredible, isn't it? Eight Mormons have to do genealogy. This is going to sound a bit strange, but Mormons have to do a lot of work for the living and for the dead. Mormons have to perform ordinance on behalf of dead people. They get baptized and they even get married on behalf of the dead. Mormons believe that once people die, they go to the spirit world, so they have to do this rites and ceremonies on their behalf because these people now dead and living in the world didn't have the chance to accept the gospel on earth. Since they don't know much about the spirit world, they have to do these rites and ceremonies on behalf of every person who ever lived on earth and that how genealogy fits in the Mormon blueprint of the afterlife. The Ninth Regulation Keeping the Sabbath Holy 
One key practice of the Mormon faith is attending church services on Sundays. These services typically consist of several hours of worship, prayer, singing, and listening to sermons. In addition to Sunday services, Mormons believe that the Sunday is the day of the Lord, so they do things like going to church, partaking the sacrament, and enjoy the company of their fellow members of the church. However, the Sabbath day requires that you don't participate in worldly activities such as doing sports and going to concerts. Mormons also participate in a variety of other religious activities, such as youth groups, missionary work, and family home evening, and this helps to imbibe good traits and the ability to adhere to our tenth rule, which is family values and abstinence before marriage. For generations, Mormon women have embodied a steadfast commitment to living a modest and traditional lifestyle, even as the world around them continues to pursue modernity. Rooted in their unwavering religious beliefs and practices, these women adhere to an intricate system of guidelines that form the foundation of their devotion to simplicity. It is through these principles that they find harmony between their faith and the ever-changing world they navigate. Church leaders have stated that outside of marriage, passionate kisses, defined as more intense and lasting longer than a brief kiss, and prolonged kisses that involve the tongue and excite the passions, are off-limits. Mormons believe that marriage should be between a man and a woman and that intimate relations should only occur within the bounds of marriage. They also believe in the importance of raising children in a loving and supportive environment. With so much emphasis on building a stronger family bond, one may wonder, what if the marriage hits the rocks and can no longer continue? Well, as no one is a saint and things don't always go as planned, divorce is tolerated but not encouraged. However, to be granted a divorce... Both parties must agree, and their church leader must approve the decision. The church also offers classes for couples who are struggling in their marriage. Since divorce rates have been increasing in Utah, the Mormon church has begun to take steps to prevent a divorce or at least help those who are going through one. It is important to note that not all Mormon churches accept the label Mormon, because the term has at times been used in a derogatory manner and it does not allow for the variety of beliefs that exist among churches that follow the Book of Mormon and the teachings of Joseph Smith. Overall, Mormon practices and traditions are centered around building strong communities, supporting families, and living a life of service. While the religion has faced controversy and criticism over the years, its emphasis on family values and community support has made it a popular and enduring faith for many people.